Welcome back to History Class with Dr. W and our continuing discussion of Vietnam. In our previous lecture, we talked about the failed attempts at peace between France and Vietnam in the aftermath of World War II, and Ho Chi Minh's ultimately failed attempts to achieve independence for Vietnam. That lecture concluded with the determination by Ho Chi Minh that there was no other alternative but war with the French. He dubbed this the war between the elephant and the tiger. And in this lecture, we'll talk about this French-Indo-Chinese war, the war between the elephant and the tiger. In November of 1946, tensions between the French and Vietnamese boiled over into combat as officials at the port of Haiphong quarreled over which group had the right to collect customs duties. French and Viet Minh soldiers exchanged shots in the streets, and the First Indochina War had begun. The French attempted to end the war quickly with an, a brutal all-out assault. They bombarded the city of Haiphong for several days from the air and from ships. Soldiers went house to house searching for Viet Minh. At the end of the shelling, 6,000 Vietnamese were dead and another 25,000 wounded. But the Vietnamese would not surrender. On December 19th, General Jap ordered that the war of national resistance begin. Viet Minh guerrillas attacked French officials, soldiers, and installations all over North Vietnam. The war that started at that point would last for eight years and end in the humiliation of the French. The war probably could have been avoided but the French were determined to reimpose colonialism on a people who absolutely refused to accept it. The French predicted a quick, easy victory over what they contemptuously called the Barefoot Army. Perhaps their predictions were well-founded. As the war began, the Viet Minh could field about 60,000 troops and about 90,000 additional peasant and youth militia, only roughly a third of the total had any kind of small weapons, and they had no navy and no air force to speak of. And yet, the Viet Minh still had a number of advantages. They were deeply experienced in fighting against the Japanese and others. There ultimately would be some Chinese aid coming to their assistance, as we'll discuss in future lectures. And the people were on their side. They definitely held the advantage of fighting on their own home turf, and this may have been their greatest advantage, as we'll see in future lectures. French predictions of a quick victory might seem well-founded just based on paper, the advantages they held as the war began. As we've discussed in the previous lecture, at the outbreak of hostility, there was relatively no interference from the other superpowers, and ultimately the French would have considerable support from the Americans. They viewed the non-involvement of Chinese at the outbreak of the war as a particular advantage and promised a quick victory. Again, they judged their opponent to be relatively weak and lightly armed, which they were at the beginning of the war. The French had absolute supremacy in the air and navy, and a vastly superior military in terms of uh, structure and materiel on paper. It seemed, indeed, that the French might win a quick victory. But Ho Chi Minh called his people to fight. Those who have rifles will use their rifles. Those who have swords will use their swords. Those who have no swords will use spades, hoes, or sticks. Long live an independent and unified Vietnam. Long live the resistance. Late in 1946, Ho Chi Minh formulated a three-stage strategy for winning the war. The first stage would be defensive. Ho and his forces would retreat into the countryside and the mountains, into the jungles, avoiding major confrontations. This is the elephant and the tiger, which he discussed leaping from the jungles, making a quick attack, and then retreating back into hiding. The second phase would be one of equilibrium, when the French and Viet Minh might be on roughly equal footing. The revolutionary forces would be growing in strength, and the imperial forces of the French would be weakening. 
And the third phase would be offensive. The Viet Minh, sensing their strength growing stronger than the French, would launch more aggressive attacks, ultimately defeating them and driving them from the country. As we will see, this is a long war and drags out for roughly eight years, but Ho's strategy of 1946 ultimately played out almost to the letter. For their part, the French strategy centered primarily around building well-fortified outposts near or even in Viet Minh-controlled areas, then heading out from there on search and destroy missions. They assumed that the Viet Minh would be quickly driven out of hiding and forced into direct combat. In October of 1947, the French launched a major offensive against Viet Minh leadership in the northern mountains. They killed over 10,000 Viet Minh, captured or killed several important leaders, and forced them to abandon their positions. But they didn't capture Ho or any of the four or five core leaders, and the resistance survived. The French began to grow frustrated by the hit-and-run tactics of their enemy and his elusiveness. They responded in many cases by destroying entire villages and killing many innocent civilians. As a result, more and more enraged peasants joined the guerrillas, allowed them to use their resources, or gave them information. By late 1947, French efforts had reached their high watermark. Even at this point, the Viet Minh resistance continued, and French efforts to find a political alternative to Ho Chi Minh failed. By early 1948, the tide of the war changed. In China, the prospect of a victory by communist Mao Zedong promised economic and military assistance to the Viet Minh. General Zapp announced that the war had reached the second stage of equilibrium. French efforts were waning and the Viet Minh was growing. They now began to go on the offensive. In our next lecture, we'll talk about that next phase of the war when the Viet Minh take the offensive.